my name is Shannon Brinkley. I am a quilt and fabric designer as well as an author and teacher of my fun and unique technique, scrappy applique. And scrappy applique is a type of raw edge applique, which I love, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. What I love about raw edge applique is that it allows for a lot of freedom in the design that you create. Pretty much any image that you can draw or trace, you can then turn into a quilt relatively easily. So let's talk today about just simple raw edge applique. So we are going to draw our image on a piece of parchment paper, not freezer paper, parchment paper. Just draw it on there, just using a regular pencil and make sure your line is relatively dark. Then you are going to lay a piece of fusible web. This type of fusible web doesn't have a paper backing. And then lay your fabric that's gonna be your applique piece on top of that. And then I'm just gonna lay an applique pressing sheet on top of that so I don't get any of my fusible on the iron. That's the number one rule when working with fusibles. Don't let it touch the iron. So you're just gonna follow the fusible web manufacturer's instructions as to how long you're gonna press and at what setting to set your iron. All right, that should be good. Alrighty, so then I am going to, let's make sure we're all. Then I am going to burnish the image onto the fabric. So to do that, it's gonna flip it over and you could use a burnishing tool or you can just use your thumbnail, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna scratch that pencil mark, that pencil line. and that will transfer that pencil line onto the back of your fabric. That way you don't have to worry about reversing your image. So peel it off, voila, it's magically transferred, and then we're just gonna cut it out. So cut out your whole heart all the way and then press it onto your background. You could be working on a pieced background or a solid piece of fabric, whatever you wanna do. And a heart is a perfect shape to start with if this is your first time satin stitching because it has all the different types of angles that we are going to uh, need to think about. So I will put a stabilizer on the back side. That way, a stabilizer will uh, ha help you to have that really nice, tidy stitch. If you don't use a stabilizer, what will often occur is what's called tunneling, where the zigzag stitch will start to pinch your fabric. So a satin stitch is just a dense zigzag stitch. So we put a stabilizer on the back, that way it will help keep a nice, tidy stitch. There won't be any puckers or anything like that. So I, I put the stabilizer on the back. There's a lot of different types. There's cutaway, tearaway, water soluble. My favorite is this iron-on tearaway stabilizer. It works really well with satin stitches because it just, it just tears away really nice and easily at the end. And let's talk about how we're going to approach these different angles. So, when you are going around what I call a gentle curve, so just the side of the, of the heart here, you are just going to turn your work as you stitch. However, when you're going around kind of a sharper curve, I know that's an oxymoron, but this, this sharper curve, you are going to stitch a few, stop with your needle down. It's really helpful whenever you're satin stitching to have your machine set to automatically have the needle down if your machine has that setting. If not, you'll want to lower the needle each time you turn your work. That way uh, the needle's not gonna jump to a crazy place. So we're gonna stitch a few, stop with your needle down, turn your work no more than 45 degrees, 
stitch a few more, stop with your needle down, turn your work no more than 45 degrees, and continue until you get all the way around that curve. If you turn big, sharp, like 90 degree angles, then you're gonna end up with a point around every, around that whole curve. We don't want that. Uh, you will, when approaching a corner, so uh, corner and point, we're gonna treat those a little bit differently. When we reach a corner, you are going to stitch to that corner and then stitch a few more stitches into that applique piece, just the width of your satin stitch. And then turn your work and then shift it if I need to. That way the needle will start exactly where I want to. Now when we are approaching points, we are just gonna stitch to the end, stop with the needle down, and then turn your work, again, uh, raising and lowering the needle manually, and continue on in the new direction. And if you have a really sharp point like I did, I made, I made this heart a, a really nice pointy point at the bottom here, it's, it's often really nice to kind of taper that satin stitch. So I'm going to have a, a wider satin stitch here, and then as I get closer to the point, I'm gonna just lower the stitch width. Now let's talk a little bit about different types of thread. So I am going to be demonstrating with a 40 weight rayon thread. Uh, it's a nice embroidery thread. Remember the lower the number with the thread weight, the wider it's gonna be. So it's gonna be a little bit thicker than your typical 50 weight thread, which you can certainly use as well. Uh, a variegated thread will add a lot of interest. You're gonna have you know, your different colors in your satin stitch. So that could be a fun, um, a fun point of interest in your applique piece. You could also add even more interest with a nice shiny metallic stitch. Uh, something like that would be a lot of fun. Alrighty, so let's satin stitch this guy. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this curve here. One more thing also to keep in mind is since it is a zigzag stitch, you're gonna wanna pay close attention to where your needle is when you're turning your work. The typical range that I set my length and width, first we wanna have a satin stitch uh, set or a zigzag stitch, depending on what your, your machine has. I have just a regular zigzag foot on, could be more open-toed or clear. All right, let's begin. We're gonna go around this gentle curve. So remember, I'm not going to need to pivot since it's a nice gentle curve. I'm approaching my point. So I'm gonna stop and um, since I'm gonna be turning my work slightly to the right, my needle's down on the left. Um, I'm going to decrease the width and then continue a bit more. And the majority of my applique stitch is on the applique piece. I'm gonna decrease it a bit more. Now it's all the way down to a two to get that nice point. And then I'm gonna pivot it and then raise and lower it manually so I know that it's gonna start exactly where I want it to. Let's have a nice point. All right, now let's cut over to this top point. So we're gonna go around this curve. I'm gonna lower it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go around this curve. So I'm gonna stop with my needle down. I'm turning my work to the left, so my needle's on the right. Pivot no more than 45 degrees. Continue. All right, pivot just slightly. Pivot slightly until we make it all the way around that curve. So let's do that corner now. Okay. So I'm gonna lower it here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to reach that corner. So now I've reached the corner, I'm gonna stitch a few more into that applique piece. Stop with my needle on the left because I'm turning my work to the right. And then remember, I'm going to raise it and lower it manually. And yes, I need to scooch it forward like a 
a millimeter, just barely. And then continue. Stitching into the applique piece helps you to have that nice sharp corner rather than creating a gap there. So this is the perfect uh, applique piece or shape to do for a very, very beginning uh, project. And then moving on to this bear is um, still a nice beginner shape to work with. And then you can even get into these more advanced shapes like the skylines and the world map. And that is how you can create a really nice, tidy satin stitch.